What's up guys? I'm going to show you some blood work of mine through a service I use called Inside Tracker. Now, full disclosure, this is a paid post. So they did pay me to do this, but Inside Tracker is something I've already used and already have loved for a couple of years now. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use this service and you can schedule your blood test or have them come to your house. So, I've already gotten two blood draws with Inside Tracker over the last couple years. This will be my third, and we'll get to see how my results have changed over time. So come with me, and we'll check it out. Okay, they, yeah, yep, those are all correct. I've been fasting for about 12 hours, which is important for this test because it's a metabolic panel. So I'm gonna get things like LDL cholesterol done, uh, fasting blood glucose, HbA1c, and a lot of these markers, HbA1c less sensitive so, though, uh, but like fast, the fasting blood glucose, the fasting cholesterol, all the different types of cholesterol, the subfractions, those are all very sensitive to fasting. Triacylglycerides very sensitive to fasting. So, you know, if you eat in the morning or something like that, your levels of TAGs will be really elevated and your blood glucose will obviously be elevated. So we fast for all that stuff. Some of the other measures are less sensitive, but again, it kind of gives you a much better baseline level to look at. And then we'll get things like testosterone is actually sensitive to fasting. And even like, you know, I basically just drank water because even if you have caffeine in the morning, caffeine for some people can acutely elevate blood glucose. So again, just been complete water fasting. And then once we're finished here, I will get my breakfast and uh, then we'll actually have some educational content to film after this. Got a boo-boo. Thank you. Thank you for your help. And that's it. Now they send it off and in usually within a few days, get the results back. So we'll see. Thank you, Brittany, for You're participating. Welcome. We appreciate it. And for doing the best blood draw ever. Did not feel a thing. All right, so just got my results back from Inside Tracker. So I'm just gonna show you guys how it works. So this is cool because I can see my most recent test right here. And then I can see the previous tests. Okay, so it pulls up uh, the unoptimized markers first. So my AST, my creatine kinase, and my eosinophil percentage are all modestly elevated. AST is a marker of liver function. That's totally normal to be modestly elevated when you're, uh, when you resistance train, when you're on a high protein diet. Not really worried about that in like the context of things. Like, and what you can do is you can actually um, click on some of the individual markers and it'll tell you what it means for your health. So like, for example, creatine kinase, which has been stable for me at about like 1100. Found in muscle cells and plays a major role in producing energy during the first few seconds of exercise. Strenuous exercise can damage muscle cells causing CK to leak in the blood. High levels of CK are a sign of muscle breakdown, signaling to your body that rest and recovery are needed. When CK levels are high, risk of injury and further damage increases and recovery from training is slower. So it's not odd that I would have a high uh, creatine kinase because I trained hard and I had trained the day before this test. So that's pretty normal for that to be modestly elevated. So eosinophil is a white blood cell that acts as infection fighters in the immune system. They are typically activated during allergic responses and associated with chronic inflammation. These can be signs of uh, long-term inflammation. Now, again, mine is modestly elevated and it's been basically the same since I've had it tested and I'm under no infection that I'm aware of. Um, I do have some allergies, but I'm not really worried about inflammation because as you'll see, my actual markers of directly tested inflammation are actually really low. So those are out of range and then like unoptimized. So these are markers that are in the normal range, but could be a little bit better essentially. So ferritin, it stores iron. So mine is a little bit high. My iron, Actually a little bit low here, interestingly. So I might need to, as you can see, it's been dropping. And so it's not out of like good range, but it's out of the optimized range. I'm not really sure what that's from. I do eat red meat, which has uh, heme iron in it. That's usually pretty good, but I may look at supplementing with some iron to get myself back into that range. And that's what's great about this is it not only shows you like what's optimized versus unoptimized, but then also tells you how you can improve those things. So vitamin B12, um, I'm actually higher than the optimal range. High levels of B12 uh, can cause rash or dry itchy skin. 
taking excess B12 does not impact energy levels or cognitive function. Like the, the downsides to this are headaches, nausea, discomfort in the chest. I don't have any of that, so I'm not really worried. Testosterone to cortisol ratio here, not really quite in the optimized range. A higher score indicates that your body is getting enough rest and recovery to increase muscle mass and strength. A lower score may be an indicator of poor recovery, high stress levels, or low quality of sleep, which can result in muscle breakdown and fatigue. So again, put this with high CK, my training has been really intense because I'm leading up to Worlds, so I probably need to get more rest than I've been getting. I tell people all the time sleep is very important, and I do usually do a good job with it, but the last couple months with travel and everything has not been great. So these were optimized, and now they are just, just slightly above. So the optimized range goes up to 85 milligrams per deciliter. I'm 87. Again, not super worried about that. Now what's cool about this is you can go to the results, what they mean for you. Also you can click on how to improve. And then they give you all these things that you can do. So add a serving of nuts to your day, sleep seven to nine hours, olive oil, workouts. So all these things are you know, referenced in scientific studies that may improve triglycerides. So my insulin is actually low. So my fasting insulin is pretty low, which means I have good insulin sensitivity. So if we look down here, it says, you know, usually people struggle with high insulin. That's what we're worried about. But below optimized levels of insulin, it says here, are associated with increased risk of chronic conditions in otherwise healthy population. Uh, below optimized levels in insulin can result in increased blood sugar levels and may indicate underlying health issues like type 1 diabetes, hypopituitarism, or pancreatic disease that are best discussed with the healthcare provider. Well, none of my other things are out of range and my blood sugar is normal. Not really too worried about this. Again, it's still in the normal reference range. It's just slightly out of the optimal range. HbA1c is, I think, probably the best marker for insulin sensitivity, or at least one of the best, because it looks at your overall exposure in your blood to glucose because it represents the, represents the average amount of glucose in your blood for the past 90 to 120 days. And that's because it takes 90 to 120 days for your red blood cells to turn over. I'm at 5.3%, optimal range 5.2%, and before this, I had two tests that were at 5%. Not really worried about that small increase. Again, my insulin was low. Unless that continues to climb and insulin continues to decline, I'm not really worried about it, but we'll keep an eye on it. My fasting glucose is in the normal reference range. It's slightly outside the optimized range, but fasting levels of glucose are less indicative of metabolic health than something like HbA1c because HbA1c is very sensitive to how much glucose overall is in your bloodstream over time. So, but again, this is gonna be something I just pay attention to, but I'm not really super concerned about. GGT, this is uh, another liver enzyme. Again, this is totally normal to be elevated with people who resisted strain or people who have a high protein diet. So those are the unoptimized biomarkers. There were 14 of them. But on the plus side, 40 of them are optimized. So ApoB, I'm really excited about this. So ApoB is the component of the lipoproteins that is damaging to the endothelium and is the, probably the best indicator, one of the best indicators of your risk of heart disease. And so we are in an optimized level that's fantastic. Now, I can't show you past December of 2022, but I can tell you Six months prior to that, I had my LDL cholesterol done and it was 150. And that was with eating under 10% calories from saturated fat and with eating over 50 grams of fiber per day. And so my family tends to run high LDL cholesterol. And so I began taking a low dose statin. So I took a Zetia and Pravastatin and Within six months, it knocked me down to under 100, so 100 to 93. And then another six months, or another nine months later, I was down to 81. And now, another nine months later, I'm down to about 74 milligrams per deciliter. So really super happy with that. Speaking of cholesterol, let's look at HDL cholesterol. HDL is basically a marker of good metabolic health. So I am very high in the optimized range, and that's good. Again, indica indicates 
good insulin sensitivity, good overall metabolic health. So check out where I was in December of 2022. Very high cortisol. Now this was a very stressful period of my life. I had just started going through my second divorce. It was a time where my sleep was low. Again, stress was high. Life was kind of chaotic. But look what happens in like nine months. Almost cut it in half. And then now even a little bit lower. Reducing your psychological stress. And I mean, did I do other things? Sure. But reducing my psychological stress, getting better sleep, I strongly attribute this decline in cortisol to those adjustments I made in my lifestyle. Now, if we look at testosterone, now this might look bad to some people, okay? So this is actually the lowest my testosterone has ever registered, 688 nanograms per deciliter. This could be partially due to the statin use, which is lowering LDL cholesterol, which may be lowering that metabolism into testosterone because testosterone is synthesized from those hormones. But let's go look at free testosterone, which is really what makes the difference. Yeah, it's dropped a little bit, but again, still in the optimized range. So what I would say here is I think a lot of this boils down to me just getting better sleep and continuing to reduce my psychological stress. But again, if there's a trade-off between slightly less optimized testosterone and a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, I'm going to take the lower risk of cardiovascular disease. Other interesting things, let's look at CRP. High sensitivity C-reactive protein is pretty much the gold standard for looking at inflammation. As you can see here, my inflammatory status is very, very low, almost out of the detectable range, 0.2 milligrams per liter. Um, you can be up to 0.7 and be optimized, and you can be up to three and be in the reference range. So I am less than a tenth of the reference range of HCRP. So this means I have good blood pressure, uh, blood glucose levels, good insulin sensitivity, uh, and a lower relative risk of heart disease. Overall, I'm really happy with these results. Again, you know, there are things I can improve on. And I think a lot of these come down to, I need to be better about my recovery. That's why I love Inside Tracker because I can see all this stuff and you can look at it in different ways. You can do it as a list. You can also do it in categories. So in categories, this is kind of cool to look at. So you can look at the things that affect cognition. So cognition, they score it overall. My overall score is good. My overall recovery is good, but not optimized. Metabolism in terms of like blood lipids and blood sugar, insulin sensitivity is in the optimal range. Endurance is optimal. Gut health is optimal. And this is again looking at like inflammation, cortisol, and blood, blood lipids and uh, blood sugar. Heart health is optimal, which I'm very happy about because that's something I'm worried about. Inflammation is optimal. Only thing that was a little bit out of reference range was ferritin. So again, very happy about that. Fitness is optimal. We know that. And so I just think it's so cool how you can reference everything here. You can learn more. It's just so easy to use how they've laid it out and the whole process is so easy and that's why I love Inside Tracker, and that's why I think it is a great tool to have for optimizing your health. Well guys, there you have it. My full blood work and you can see how it's changed over time. You know, again, there were some great things in there. Seeing my cortisol go down significantly, seeing my LDL improve, seeing my markers of metabolic health improve. Those are all great things. You could argue that there's a drop in testosterone there, but my free testosterone has stayed pretty consistently in the optimal range, so I'm not super worried, although I am gonna focus on getting better sleep because I know that will help my overall recovery and helping to pump those testosterone levels back up, hopefully. If you guys wanna use this service, I highly recommend it. I think Inside Tracker is not only great because it's convenient, you can just go online and schedule your blood draw. It also puts it in a portal where it's gonna show your results over time, but also give you feedback on lifestyle factors that you can modify to improve the markers that are not in the optimal range. So if you guys are interested in trying it out, you can use my code BIOLANE and get 15% off all those services. Click the link in the description and check it out. Thanks, Inside Tracker.